The goal is not to forget. The goal is not to let go. It's not about forgetting someone. That may seem like the easiest thing to do. It may seem like that's what will ease the pain if I can just forget this person. But of course you can't. And that's not even the goal. It's not about forgetting them. It's actually the opposite. It's actually about holding on to them, but holding on to the depth of who they are, not just the physical form. When someone we love passes away, our task, our goal, our challenge, the whole point of it is not to forget them. It's, it's always to remember them, to hold on to them with us, to hear their voice, to see them, to feel them. That's wonderful. If when she was not there anymore, you forgot, then that's just the sort of out of sight, out of mind situation, which is fine in some circumstances, but not for our closest relationships. We don't have an out of sight, out of mind relationship with our loved ones. It's not just because my eyes can't see her anymore, or my ears can't hear her, or my fingers can't touch her that now it's as though she never existed. It's simply that our perception has to shift in terms of what eyes we're using to see her, what ears we're using to hear her, how we're feeling her. We've become so, so adapted and habituated to just using these eyes to see, using these ears to hear, using these fingers to touch, that if I can't see it with my eyes, it's not there. If I can't hear it with my ears, it's not there. If I can't touch it with my fingers, it's not there. But these senses are just for the most, the most gross. Our relationship is much more subtle than that. So now you're just being challenged, not to forget her, but to see her with different eyes, to hear her with different ears, to feel her in a different way rather than just with the senses on the tips of your fingers. So don't worry about forgetting her. Hold on to her. It wasn't her body that you were so attached to. Her body kept changing from the time she gave birth to you and you nursed to the time she passed away. How much that body changed? Quite a lot. Of course. She suffered from cancer and lost a lot of weight and everything. But even aside from that, every cell of her being changed. Every seven, eight years, every cell of our bodies change. So aside from just the aging factor, the very cells of who we are keep changing and keep changing and keep changing. If I were, you know, in love with him and attached to the, the skin cells, well, every three days when they sloughed off and he got new ones, I'd go through a mourning period. It's not his skin cells I'm in love with. Doesn't mean they're not beautiful, but the point is that, that when, when, when we love someone, that's, that's not what we're in love with. We, if a loved one were in love with their eyes, well, now they have to start wearing glasses, so we suddenly stop loving them. We love their hair, they get a bad haircut or they go bald, we stop loving them? Of course not. We love their arms, some tragic accident happens, they get an arm amputated. We, it's not that we stop loving them. So. I'm not belittling the body. We do have an attachment to the comfort of seeing things in a familiar way, hearing them in a familiar way, touching them in a familiar way. But what death does is it actually challenges us to take that relationship deeper. It's not about letting it go and forgetting it. 
It's can I take my relationship deeper? That's what you're being called on to do. But how do we take that relationship deeper? Because you have you have no choice. The, it's it's a shift in perception. Instead of telling yourself, I need to forget her, shift shift the inner voice. Instead of telling yourself, I need to forget her, I need to let her go, make it the exact opposite. When you sit down in puja, when you sit down in meditation, when you lie down to go to sleep at night, call her forth. Really? really? Because I have sleepless nights because they used to call me at night. Call her, call her forth and what you will find is you can hear her. Which is wonderful. The problem is our culture says, oh, just stop, you're going crazy, you know, it's the grief, you're losing your mind. No, not at, not at all. The soul is still here. You think, I mean, you think the only thing that can hear is our tympanic membrane that, you know, sound waves come and our membrane like a drum vibrates. It's, it's the method, it's the medium. They actually did a study, I was just reading it yesterday. They took people who were 100% blind, absolutely not just mostly blind, but 100% blind, they couldn't see anything. And they actually shined a blue light in front of these people for a minute. And then they asked them what the color of the light that had been shined in front of their eyes was. And a huge percentage, much, much more than chance, got it right. There's, there's a seer in us that's not the eyes. There's a hearer in us that's not the ears. These are the, the convenient mechanisms. But the subtle seer, the subtle hearer, the subtle feeler is there anyway. How many, how many stories have we heard of people who have lost some sort of sense, but they still know? So. Call her forth. Change your entire perception. Call her forth. Would that ease my pain no? it, it would ease some of it. It's not going to bring her back in physical form. You need to give yourself permission to mourn that loss. That's a loss. You were accustomed, accultured, habituated, in love with a physical form. That physical form is no longer here. Give yourself permission to mourn that, but realize that the depth of your mother is actually still here. So you've lost a particular form of her, but she is still here. So it's not going to ease the pain of having her physical form back. But it'll at least stop driving you crazy of trying to forget perhaps the single most important person in your life, which is an absurdity. Yes, you are right there, because the more I try to forget her, the more I remember her. Of course, because your inner heart is a much better guide than what culture and society says. So culture and society is saying, forget her. Your inner heart says, but she was the most important person in my life. The more I try to run away from her, don't run. Where, where, where she this is to leave, the more I seem to This is what I'm telling you, do the opposite. She is still here. Embrace her, call her forth, talk to her, and have pity on those who tell you that you're crazy because what it means is that they are so limited to the shallow material senses that they're not able to connect to the depth. But don't let them convince you you're crazy. Oh no, I don't want any depressions or anything. But that's, that's what uh, okay. worries me. Nothing to be worried about. Nothing to be worried about. Um, Call her forth. Know that she's with you. Hear her. Talk to her. Be with her.
she wouldn't be when she was passing away. She stayed eight days in coma and her soul. She would yeah, I'm not going to go into too many details about this, but what I would just say very simply is that we all know that there's lots of parts of us. We have our physical body. We have our soul. Then we have our mind, which is kind of somewhere in between. We have our senses. The mind is very strong, and the attachments are also very strong. And there are absolutely times in which the mind and the attachments play the strongest role. And so whereas the body is ready to just be shed, they will hold on to that body. There's lots and lots of stories of people on their deathbed but holding on until a child gets married or a child is born and to hold a grandchild. I mean, to fulfill the wishes, of course, of course. But this is a natural phase of life. Nothing wrong with you. Just have peace with whatever comes up. When it's sadness, when it's joy, just let it be there. I want to be able to take your question as well.